Hello and welcome to episode four of Inside Main. Crikey, we're cracking along now, aren't we? Yes, we are. <laughs> First up this week on a rather um, interesting, articulated show, you boring. could say. Boring? Not boring show, but boring. Yeah. But that's up for debate. That's not, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> we have a, a rarity, really. It's very rare that car shows these days do cover something on classic cars. The, the heritage behind the history and the, uh, the forefathers of the figures that we see on the roads today. And uh, I managed to get hold of a very special classic car. One of, the, I think, the best that British has ever produced. So let's see whether it can stand up to today's cars or even whether it has actually earned its place on the table of history. Classic cars, a triumphant symbol of years gone by. A showcase of technology that went on to spawn the future generation of the automobile. Without them, the cars that you or I drive simply wouldn't exist. So why then, if classic motoring is such a trophy, why do these icons of the past spend their time in the back of a shed, fading into the pages of history? Well today, that's not going to happen, as one of these fabled creatures is stepping out from living memory and onto the tarmac of the 21st century. is fresh from 1984 and represents what once was one of the greatest sports car manufacturers the world had ever seen. Though the Marcus Mantula has already started to be forgotten. Give it a quick Google search and you'll struggle to find anything. Car history, you might find a few images, the odd video. But like I say, few examples exist these days and information is even scarce. And that's a shame, because the Mantula is a true representation of the breed. You see, British sports cars were never about power or performance. I mean, this only had 194 brake horsepower from its Rover V8 when it was new. But they were about more than that. They were about ingenuity. Take a look at this purpose-built cockpit, and you'll find components that, well, are shared with office furniture. But you see, it just works. It doesn't need a Technomarine gear lever or a steering wheel made of dolphin. It just does the job, and it does it well, and that goes some way towards producing that quintessential British charm. Enough about history. Let's remind the world why cars like this are worth the high maintenance costs, the loss of a social life, and potentially being killed by an inevitable fire. Well, at least we would, but... Yeah, we've got a slight issue with the oil filter and, and various other bits and pieces and uh, the parts are only made in America now, so this particular Manchula isn't going anywhere for a little bit. But we can still relish in the fact that it has that magnificent Rover V8 that's not working at the moment and all of these delicate and intricate dials that are lacking electricity to work at the moment. Uh, but the, at least the upholstery, we can we can really take take uh, light in the brilliant quality of the British cows that laid down their lives for this car. So right now it is a glorified armchair, but when it is working, then you'll see. So. Without coming over all soft or overly patriotic, we should remember that it's cars like this that are the foundations of the machines that we drive today. These marvellous pieces of technology of days gone by are the very reason that we have some of the marvellous machinery that we do. It's a shame that this roaring V8 isn't rumbling today, because I think we might have a few more classic car fans yet. Another time. So 
there we go. The very beautiful, yet yeah, dysfunctional on that particular day, Marcus Manchuva. Yeah, and I suppose that is something you've always got to remember with classic cars, no matter what it is. There's always going to be that problem of reliability, and unfortunately you just can't escape it. Yeah, there's a lot of history behind it, and I think we can all say, sitting here, that we, we do love the Marcos, especially, especially me, I really do love that car. It's the, it's the kind of British pride, I suppose, you get from owning a car such as this, keeping it alive. It has to be on life support, like Bruce Forsyth, for example. Can we move on? We shall move on. Perhaps to the news? Yes, to the news.